Javier Millet, Argentina's wild, new, and almost crazy president. Uh, but behind the wild haircuts and the chainsaws, Javier is a true libertarian in the purer sense, not like the sort of woke liberals you see today, you know, who have blue hair and protest at anything and everything, uh, but a true libertarian who values freedom, democracy, the rights of people, property rights, and minimal government intervention. He was appointed as Argentina's uh, latest uh, prime minister or president in December 2023, and his admission has administration has proposed significant reforms to the country's fiscal situation, the government structure and economic policies, all in the view of sort of libertarianism. He has dissolved several of the government ministries as part of a sort of broader agenda to uh, streamline government, cut back on government functions and reduce public spending. He is such an important um, presence and his success is really important for the West to take note because it shows exactly why capitalism is so effective, why it's led to the most prosperous period in human history and exactly why socialism has never worked. And, you know, Argentina used to be one of the richest countries in the world. It started to adopt sort of socialist uh, agendas and policies. And then you've seen the impact. It has one of the worst inflations, hyperinflations in the world. And it's, you know, fallen down the dra rankings drastically, despite being, you know, having resources and everything. So it should be fine. Um, but Javier Millet, he sort of shows exactly why capitalism, cap, uh, capitalism is so important, why it is morally superior, why it raises the standards of everyone. And I think it's a really important lesson for all the leaders in the West to sort of understand exactly the difference between socialism and capitalism and understand why, you know, having these so socialist agendas and policies is really to the detriment of everyone. And I think he's such an important example. And he made his uh, views really clear in when he went to Davos and sort of tore apart the Davos elite, socialism in what is a legendary uh, speech. And, you know, it's definitely worth, worth a watch and it really helps explain exactly who he is and, you know, his agendas. And I'll go for it here now. So it starts off with obviously Cloud Schwab, or whatever his name is, introducing him um, as the new president. You can see how beamingly happy he is. Um, but it, I would watch it in full. Uh, I'm going to skip over a few bits, but um, definitely worth a watch if you've never watched this before. Oh, we've got the translate on because he does not talk English. Speed. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Today I'm here to tell you that the Western world is in danger. And so he's going to explain, you know, why the Western world is in danger. And I, you know, I sort of agree with him that it is. It's, you know, sort of forgotten what made itself great, abandoned the principles that made it great. And, you know, he's going to explain exactly what those principles are and why, you know, the West is in danger and needs to follow his example and understand uh, exactly the difference and why it needs to revert back to what made it so great. And it is in danger because those who are supposed to have to defend the values of the West are co-opted by a vision of the world that inexorably leads to socialism and thereby to poverty. Unfortunately, in recent decades, motivated by some well-meaning individuals willing to help others and others motivated by the wish to belong to a privileged class, the main leader already um, criticizing Davos there because that is just, you know, an elitist class who people want to be part of the group, even if it means forming these weird, you know, social justice and woke ideologies just so they can be part of a group. They're willing to abandon freedom, abandon uh, free enterprise and everything that makes uh, the world so great. Leaders of the Western world have abandoned the model of freedom for different versions of what we call collectivism. We're here to tell you that collectivist experiments are never the solution to the problems that afflict the citizens of the world. Rather, they are the root cause. Do believe me, no one better place than us, Argentines, to testify to these two points. 
So I'll skip over a bit here, um, but basically this is important. He goes through all the facts and figures um, showing exactly, you know, what Argentina was when it had capitalism policies, then over the sort of past hundred years where it's adopted uh, socialist agendas and the impact that has to the growth, to inflation, to, you know, the common man and really the how it's flown down the rankings and the drastic impact, you know, those policies have had on a country like Argentina. When we adopted the model of freedom back in 1860, in 35 years we became a leading world power. And when we embraced collectivism over the course of the last 100 years, we saw how our citizens started to become systematically impoverished. And we dropped to spot number 140 globally. Into the data here, um, I'll skip over this, you can watch that in your own time, but it sort of shows. Uh, exactly, you know, how capitalism has, has led to, you know, the prosperity we see uh, today. That by the year 1800, about 95% of the world's population lived in extreme poverty, and that figure dropped to 5% by the year 2020 prior to the pandemic. The conclusion is obvious. Far from being the cause of our problems, free trade capitalism as an economic system is the only instrument we have to end hunger, poverty, and extreme poverty across our planet. The empirical evidence is unquestionable. Therefore, since there is no doubt that free enterprise capitalism is uh, superior in productive terms, the left wing doctor has attacked capitalism, alleging matters of morality, saying, uh, that's what the detractors claim, that it's unjust. And I think that's so important to understand. You know, if you, if capitalism raises the standards of everyone, it leads to better healthcare, better growth, um, you know, all this stuff that capitalism leads to, then that is morally superior. You know, it gives you the money, the finances, the resources that you can then go ahead and solve some of the biggest issues in the world. You know, capitalism rewards people for solving problems. It re rewards people for building value, building things in a way that no one's done before. And, you know, if something's a problem, th then that's deemed great enough, then capitalism finds a solution because it rewards people for solving those problems. And that's why it is morally superior, whereas socialism just doesn't work and leads to, you know, people fighting and poverty. The problem is that social justice is not just, and it doesn't contribute either to the general well-being. Quite on the contrary, it's an intrinsically unfair idea because it's violent. It's unjust because the state is financed through tax, and taxes are collected coercively. Or can any one of us say that they voluntarily pay taxes? Which means that the state is financed through coercion, and that the higher the tax burden, the higher the coercion, and the lower the freedom. The and that's the important thing about how governments work. Ultimately, governments are only supported by your tax and you don't do that out of your own goodwill. You know, the the higher the, the burden, the higher they collect, the less freedoms you get, they take your money and um, obviously that is not freedom. Politics demonize an economic system that has not only lifted out of extreme poverty 90% of the world's population, but has continued to do this faster and faster. And this is morally superior and just. Thanks to free trade capitalism, um, it is um, to be seen that the world is now um, living its best moment. Never in all of mankind's or humanity's history has there been a time of more prosperity than today. And that's important. You know, capitalism has led to you know, 90% of people being raised out of poverty. It's led to a better world. If you were to go back and pick a time you wanted to live, which would be more prosperous than today, then you couldn't, you know. You wouldn't want to live 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 500 years ago, in terms of the prosperity and your options, freedom and respect the uh, property rights of individuals, because countries that have more freedom are 12 times richer than those that are repressed. And the and there you go. That's a you know great fact that people who have more freedom are twelve times you know more prosperous, and you can see that you know when you compare dictatorships to uh, countries you know that have freedom, they are people who have freedom and free choice, free will, free enterprise are far more successful. The lowest decile in terms of distribution of free countries are better off than 90% of the population of repressed countries. And uh, poverty is 25 uh, times lower, and uh, extreme poverty is 50 times lower. And citizens in free countries live 25% longer than citizens in repressed countries. Now, what is it that we mean when we talk about libertarianism? Important. So he is a self-proclaimed libertarian, 
and he's going to explain exactly um, his view, what libertarian is, and then that's going to give you a good understanding of his policies. Um, and we'll come to those uh, later on. I'll address some of the policies he's implemented. But it's good to understand exactly what his his view of the world is, what libertarian is, and then you'll be able to see that reflected in his policies. On freedom in Argentina, Professor Alberto Benegas Lech Jr., who says that libertarianism is the unrestricted respect for the life project of others, based on the principle of non-aggression, in defense of the right to life, liberty and property. Its fundamental institutions being private property, markets free from state intervention, free competition, the division of labor, and social cooperation, as part of which success is achieved only by serving others with goods of better quality or at a better price. In other words, capitalists, Successful business people are social benefactors who, far from appropriating the wealth of others, contribute to the general well-being. And this is the model that we are advocating for the Argentina of the future, a model based on the fundamental principles of libertarianism, the defense of life, of freedom, and of property. And I think those are all great things to fight towards, uh, freedom, democracy, you know, individual rights. And I think when you have that in a place and that system in place, then that is only going to be a benefit to the world. Now, if free enterprise capitalism and economic freedom have proven to be extraordinary instruments to end poverty in the world, and we are now at the best time in the history of humanity, it is worth asking why I say that the West is... And this is an important thing he's going to, you know... Uh, go through now and it links back to the start when the West is in danger and exactly why you know if you think capitalism has led to the most people being raised out of poverty it's led to the most prosperous period in human history you know it begs the question why on earth would anyone um, adopt any any type of socialist agenda any type of socialist policies when the empirical data clearly states uh, that capitalism has led to the success of today. It's in danger. And I say this precisely because in those of our countries that should defend the values of the free market, private property and the other institutions of libertarianism, sectors of the political and economic establishment, some due to mistakes in the theoretical framework and others due to a greed for power, are undermining the foundations of libertarianism, opening up the doors to socialism and potentially condemning us to poverty, misery and stagnation. It should never be forgotten that socialism is always and everywhere an impoverishing phenomenon that has failed in all countries where it's been and that's such an important point. You know, a lot of these uh, global elites, people at Davos are sort of advocating these policies. But when you look throughout history, they've never, ever worked. You know, you, you have to look at every socialist, uh, you know, country and no one would want to live there. Everyone wants to leave that country because of exactly that. There's no freedom and it leads to poverty and fighting. Try it out. It's been a failure economically, socially, culturally, and it also murdered over a hundred million human beings. Now he's going to go into sort of more of the detail here. Uh, I'll skip over this, but you know he's giving you sort of a great understanding of you know how it's strange, almost strange, how people are capitalism has got us to the most prosperous uh, place in human history. And people seem to forget that and try to adopt these other policies which have been proven uh, to fail time and time and time again. Couldn't have been otherwise. The solution to be proposed by collectivists is not greater freedom, but rather greater regulation, which creates a downward spiral of... Um, and that's a, a point there. You know, these government, government agencies, all they do is create more rules, more rules, more rules, which in turn means, as a result, that they are therefore taking away your freedom and if free enterprise and freedom and democracy is the best way then clearly having all these government agencies dictate new rules and rules and rules which is in turn taking away your freedom is not to the benefit of yourself or the economy or growth or people in general of regulations until we're all poorer and the life of all of us depends on a bureaucrat sitting in a luxury uh, office given the dismal failure of collectivist models and the undeniable and this is something he one of his policies uh, you know he's been dismantling a lot of these government agencies because ultimately they serve no purpose they just add rules regulations which hinder uh, small businesses because they just can't compete and all it is, is an unelected bureaucrat who's never got a job in the real world 
who lives in a nice house dictating um, the way lives and businesses should run for everyone else. And that is not uh, capitalism. That is not freedom. You know, that's just someone who's never had a job making up rules uh, and benefiting himself, whereas everyone else suffers. And he's going to go into this uh, again. He's going to talk about sort of how uh, you have all these government agencies, especially in Argentina, who really serve no purpose and, you know, are just run by these bureaucrats who who ultimately ha- make no change. They've never had a real job and they don't, don't deserve to be there and the money will be better spent elsewhere. Ridiculous and un- unnatural fight between man and woman. Libertarianism already provides for equality uh, of these sexes. The uh, co- cornerstone of our creed says that all humans are created equal, that we all have the same unalienable rights granted by the creator, including uh, life, freedom and ownership. All that this radical feminism agenda has led to is greater state intervention to hinder the economic process, giving a job to bureaucrats who have not contributed anything to society. Examples, um, ministries of, of women or international organizations devoted to promoting this agenda. That's point like, has the real world really benefited from any of these government agencies? No, they just lead to more rules, take away your freedom. And it's just paying an unelected bureaucrat a ton of money for doing nothing. Like nothing ever changes with those. And, you know, that dismantling them would save you money, which can then be poured into things that actually matter. Unfortunately, these harmful ideas have taken a strong hold in our society. Neo-Marxists have managed to co-opt the uh, common sense of the Western world, and this they have achieved by appropriating the uh, media, culture, universities, and also international organizations. Fortunately, there's more and more of us who are daring to make our voices heard, because we see that if we don't truly and decisively fight against and that's uh, important, you know. He is a voice against all these, um, all these agendas, and a fight back. And I think the West needs to follow suit, watch what he does, listen to him, and also fight back and get themselves on the right path. Against these ideas, the only possible fate is for us to have increasing levels of state regulation, socialism, poverty, and less freedom, and therefore uh, will be um, having worse standards of living. The West has unfortunately already started to go along this path. I know to many it may sound ridiculous to suggest that the West has turned to socialism. Today, states don't need to directly control the means of production to control every aspect of the lives of individuals. With tools such as printing money, debt, subsidies, controlling the interest rate, price controls and regulations to correct the so-called market failures, they can control the lives and failures. And I think that's an important point, you know, he's um, put in there that, you know, the traditional way of socialism, you know, is not what they do. They print money, they use debt, they subsidize certain businesses, certain industries, certain companies, and that ultimately alters the lives of everyone. All say that the state should steer all aspects of the lives of individuals. They all defend a model contrary to that one which led humanity to the most spectacular progress in its history. We have come here today to invite the rest of the countries in the Western world to get back on the path of prosperity. And I agree here, it's time to get back on the path of prosperity. Prosperity, economic freedom, uh, limited government, uh, government and um, unlimited respect for private property are essential elements uh, for economic growth. And the impoverishment produced by collectivism is no fantasy, nor is it an es- inescapable fate. But it's a reality that we Argentines know very well. We have lived through this, we have been through this, because as I said earlier, ever since we decided to abandon the model of freedom that had made us rich, we have been caught up in a downward spiral, as part of which we are poorer and poorer day by day. So this is something we have lived through and we are here to warn you about what can happen if the countries in the Western world that became rich through the model of freedom stay on this path of servitude. The case of Argentina is an empirical demonstration that no matter how rich you may be or how much you may have in terms of natural resources. And that's a great point. Argentina is a great example. You know, they used to be rich. Then they adopted these policies um, thinking, you know, things will be fine, that they could manage it, that they would be different. And ultimately, the result is exactly the same. So ultimately, everyone in the country suffered. Now, if everyone in the country suffers, you know, yes, you can say that's equal, but it's not morally superior because everyone suffers.
resources or how skilled your population may be or, or educated or how many bars of gold you may have in the central bank. If measures are adopted that hinder the free function of markets, free competition, free price systems, if you hinder trade, if you attack private property, the only possible fate is poverty. And this is his final message, and I think it's an import, important one to uh, listen to. And it talks about fighting back against uh, socialism, um, because if you don't, then socialism will creep in. Do not be intimidated, intimidated either by the political class or by parasites who live off the state. Do not surrender to a political class that only wants to stay in power and retain its privileges. You are social benefactors, your heroes, you're the creators of the most extraordinary period of prosperity we've ever seen. Let no one tell you that your ambition is immoral. If you make money, it's because you offer a better product at a better price, thereby contributing to general well-being. Do not surrender to the advance of the state. The state is not the solution. The state is the problem itself. You are the true protagonists of this story. And rest assured that as from today, Argentina is your staunch, unconditional ally. Thank you very much, and long live freedom. Damn it. Let's go. Long live freedom. Um, but yeah, I'll quickly go into sort of how these policies um, are in um, in Argentina, now that he's uh, the president. I mean, obviously, he's mentioned quite a few of them there. Obviously, less government less government intervention, um, property rights for everyone, uh, freedom for everyone, um, free enterprise, and sort of making sure that all of those things come together. Um, and, you know, you'll see the results and the results are, you know, um, although inflation is massively high, it is starting to cool down in Argentina. And, you know, I think it's an important to watch um, his policies. And I think that leads to a better society. But I'll go into his policies now. So yeah, the main policy is obviously trying to um, do everything to bring capitalism back to Argentina. And that the main part is reducing the state's uh, role in letting people have their freedoms. So he's, you know, streamlined and reduced government. He's got rid of all the ministries, you know, the ministries that are just completely pointless and everyone knows are pointless, you know, Ministry for Gender, Ministry for Women, Ministry for Diversity, for Culture, the Environment sustainability, social security, all these things, he sort of got rid of them all or streamlined them. And because all they are is completely pointless institutions run by, you know, bureaucrats who've never got a job, don't understand the real world. And, you know, let's think, what's better, spending £50 million a year running some government agency or putting that 50 million, you know, into the healthcare system or actually impacting people's lives. You know, the latter is clearly better. Um, and by sort of cutting the costs, they help to control the debt in Argentina, which in turn is, you know, gives uh, people confidence in the country, in the currency and inflation. And those are the two biggest problems in Argentina. It's sort of the debt, the currency, and the sort of as a result, the inflation, which is, you know, at, you know, it's like 200% or something crazy. Um, but by sh showing this, controlling it and making actual efforts to reduce public debt, it restores confidence, not just for people within Argentina, but sort of outside investors who are always worried about these sort of skyrocketing costs. And that's going to help stabilize the currency, reduce the inflation, which if you reduce the inflation, that is going to be to the benefit of everyone uh, who lives uh, within Argentina. And another one of his policies is just to, you know, is sort of have that laissez-faire approach to, you know, the economy and let people be uh, the sort of, let people do what they want to do. You know, let people choose what businesses they want to support, what they want to buy, how much they want to buy, and let then let the market decide because of that. And, you know, he, he is a defender of, you know, freedoms and the sort of, sanctity of life and he promotes people to have their own you know private private property free markets minimal state and as a result uh, maximizing capitalism which in turn is going to help reduce the poverty increase the wealth and let people in argentina thrive and you can see already in the sort of um the sort of uh, the inflation rates that they have cooled i think they've cooled for like uh, six months in a row, which is pretty impressive. And I think it's a, he is a great example for the West to follow, you know, for capitalism to thrive, which is the system that has brought us into all this prosperity. You need economic freedom, you need liberty, you need property rights, and you need minimal government intervention, because 
ultimately um, they don't know best and they just put more rules and reduce freedom of everyone. And, you know, he's been critics, a big critic of these sort of social agendas and uh, these sort of political elites and elite, elite class who want to put their own ideas onto everyone. Um, and I completely re- agree with him that we need to embrace freedom. And, you know, this address was a direct challenge to the sort of Davos elite. And I think we need to have a, a radical shift back to to freedom, freedom for everyone, free enterprise. And as he said at the end, long live freedom.